We will find it difficult to keep up with Christ when he calls us to follow. We become spiritually lethargic and out of shape. We stray from God's path. Temptation is harder to resist. We don't evidence the fruit of the Spirit. We may exhibit less patience, kindness, mercy, and love. God may seem distant, and our faith more perfunctory, routine, or mechanical. We worry more as we trust God less. Our thoughts revolve more around ourselves. Our values and priorities shift away from the things of God and the values and prioritizations that he has for us. Hamilton, in those words, really kind of captures our human condition. Our daily struggle to stay faithful to the life God calls us to live. A life that God, that God is front and center in all that we do, our focus and our purpose. And so the passage in Matthew Jesus is calling us to evaluate our spiritual practices and the motivations behind those things. What drives us to pray and to tithe and to fast? He instructs us that our practices and motivations that encompass our spiritual practices are really a barometer of our relationship with God. barometer of our spiritual health. So he says, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. It's a warning that incorrect motivation causes some to practice their faithfulness not out of respect and love for God, but out of the desire to feed their own ego. He says, so that they may be praised by others, so that they may be seen by others, and so to show others they are fasting. Jesus is not suggesting for a second that we don't have public acts of worship, but rather he's shining a spotlight on the attitude for which we do these things, the attitude for what we carry out. And so Lent is a time and an opportunity to reflect, to reflect on who we are in Jesus Christ. It's a time to repent and evaluate what we need to change and what we can continue to build upon. And it's a time to strengthen our relationship with God and with one another. And really take time to give thanks for the sacrifice of Jesus for our sins and the blessings we all receive in this life and to share that in tangible ways with others, to share the knowledge of God and the cross. From the time of creation, God set us apart from everything else that he created. We are the only creation that was made in his likeness, that was given dominion over all of creation. We are special, we are set aside in God's eyes. We are like no other part of creation. We were created to be in close relationship with one another and with God. But then sin entered our world. And Adam and Eve and the rest of us have been shut out of the Garden of Eden. We struggle with our human condition. That human condition that Adam Hamilton talks about. That makes us stray from God's path. That makes temptations harder to resist causes us to exhibit a decrease in patience and kindness and love toward one another. And it makes us worry more and trust God less. And it trends our thoughts and our actions to revolve more around ourselves than about God. And our values and priorities shift away from the things God values and prioritizes for us. So God's fully aware of our human condition. That's the good news, that he knows what we're like. He knows what we suffer from, our sinfulness, our brokenness. But through God's grace and divinity and his mercy, God never, ever has ever stopped loving us. He 
sent his son, Jesus Christ, to give us a way back into the garden, to be back in relationship with God our Father. That Jesus, fully human, fully divine, came to pay for our sins once and for all, to lead us back into that relationship with our Creator in heaven. In John 3, 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So Jesus' ministry, his death, and his resurrection was not so much about sin as it was about the grace and salvation from sin. I'm going to say that one again because it's an important concept for us to truly take into our souls. That Jesus' ministry, his death and resurrection was not so much about sin as it is about the grace and salvation from sin. He came to take us from our sin. And so the cross, then, is a very real symbol of grace and mercy and our opportunity to receive salvation and eternal life. Grace and mercy are gifts from God that we don't earn that are renewed every day through our baptism. And so on this Ash Wednesday, when we place the symbol of the cross on our foreheads, not to bring attention to ourselves or to say we're better than someone else, but to humbly thankfully acknowledge the gift that God, our creator in heaven, has given to us. The gift of forgiveness of sins. And the opportunity to return through the garden gate with Jesus. And so Christians since the third century have placed the symbol of the cross in ashes on their foreheads. The ashes from the previous year's palm branches from Palm Sunday recognizing the sacrifice from God that God made through Jesus Christ to reconcile us back, to bring us back into full relationship with our Creator, to save us from our human condition that pulls us away from God. So with ashes on our foreheads, our sin and our human condition is quite very much in front of us before us. And we are reminded of Jesus' words at the end of our text that we read tonight. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So with that, we echo the psalmist's prayer that Ingrid read for us from Psalm 51 when he says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new light and right spirit within me. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. That is what is before us as we start our Lenten journey. And so as in years past, during the season of Lent, I look with absolute anticipation how we will, together, through worship and through intentional times of silence, recognize Jesus in new ways that will shape and mold us into God's image as a community of faith. Called to be a part of God's mission with clean hearts, right spirits, open lips and mouths praising God with ceaseless gratitude. So before our song, our hymn of the day, let's pause and take the next couple of minutes to reflect quietly on Jesus. <coughs>